Welcome English second year students. It's my very great pleasure and privilege to be here with you today. My name is Gerald Gaylord. I'm professor of English literature at WITS and I'm going to be taking you for a short course in Romanticism. Now I'm going to start by making the somewhat bold and perhaps arrogant sounding claim that this will be the most important thing that you will study at university. Uh, I'm hoping to back up that claim by the end of this uh, very short uh, video. Um, we're going to be uh, looking at three quite well-known British and British South African Romantic poets, William Wordsworth, John Clare, uh, and uh, Thomas Pringle, who was uh, both Scottish and South African, I guess you could argue. And uh, there are just a few poems uh, from each of these three poets which are on the course, most of which are provided uh, for you uh, in the PowerPoint presentation that uh, this video is embedded into. And um, uh, what I'd like to do with this course is not provide you with any other information, really. There is a reading set list. Uh, which you can look at, which you can pursue uh, in your own time. I highly recommend that you do so. But nevertheless, I've not given any secondary reading for this course. And the reason is very simply uh, this, that Romanticism is about authentic, personal, direct experience. Not about reading somebody else's experience. It's about authentic, personal experience and engagement. So the required reading for this course is very simply uh, the poetry by the three poets that we're going to read. And of course, uh, I hope that you'll read beyond uh, just those few poems that we're doing of each one of these poets. Um, but apart from that, I've provided no other secondary material for you to read to be overly influenced by and to copy. Rather, I'd encourage you to do something unusual, something which none of your other professors, I'm willing to bet, uh, have suggested that you do. I suggest uh, that you either, uh, by your own transport or public transport or otherwise, find yourself in nature somewhere. The further away from humanity and civilization, the better. Maybe this will just mean a short stroll down to the bottom of your garden if you have one of those, or perhaps a walk in the neighborhood. But um, if you could get out of the city and find yourself in some untrammeled nature to spend some time in, that is your required reading for this course, apart from the poets, of course, and their poems. So. I'm hoping to encourage some direct, authentic, personal engagement on your part uh, with uh, nature, which is what Romanticism is all about. So uh, before um, I carry on further with this question of Romanticism, perhaps I should also just point out that I'm very much hoping uh, that uh, you'll find the test straightforward. I've set very easy questions for you. So the test on the 5th of October uh, should not be difficult. If you've read the poems, if you've thought about them, if you've engaged with your own experience of nature, I'm sure you're going to be 100% fine. There's, of course, a ton of material on the internet and elsewhere about romanticism. It's a major cultural movement. You might say it's the major cultural movement over the last uh, 200 years. Uh, that's highly debatable, but nevertheless, I would uh, be so bold as to make that kind of claim. All right, so uh, uh, the required uh, reading material, the test. What about the content of what we're doing? Well, I'm hoping uh, that the term ecology is uh, self-explanatory. I don't want to say uh, too much more about that, although there is a great deal more to be said about it. Um, uh, but I would uh, like to move on quickly to try and define Romanticism. Now, I've gained this definition through uh, long reading in Romanticism, um, but not really from any textbook or other critic. Um, uh, I've 
taken romanticism seriously and personally engaged directly and authentically with it. And rather than give you somebody else's view, um, this is my view. So uh, you can blame me entirely for it. Um, my view is that Romanticism is perhaps the most significant cultural movement over the last couple of hundred years uh, because Romanticism is um, the first major critique of and opposition to and even alternative to modernity, the culture in which we currently live. Uh, you, you might regard our current culture as being hyper-modernity or post-modernity or hyper-post-modernity, um, call it what you will, but nevertheless, uh, we're today living in what began uh, in human culture some 200, 300 uh, years ago now. And uh, Romanticism is important because it's the first major critique of modernity, early modernity at that point, um, uh, but also an alternative to modernity. So um, what is Romanticism exactly? Romanticism advanced a critique of the alienation from the self, a critique of uh, overly dominating societies and social expectations, uh, a critique of uh, the alienating effects of labor, of mass consumption, uh, of uh, the Ford's production line, and so on, of uh, modernity, the era in which they lived. Um, and uh, this first stage of modernity um, well, perhaps it's not the first stage. The first stage might be um, the ideas of liberty, equality, and fraternity, which uh, came to fruition uh, during the Renaissance era, Shakespeare's era, if you like, uh, 16th uh, and 17th centuries. But modernity proper really starts with the Industrial Revolution. What was the Industrial Revolution? Well, very simply, it was a huge wave of technological and other innovation and change that swept uh, across Europe, beginning primarily in northwestern England in the 1750s. So the Industrial Revolution begins around 1750, and uh, it's uh, the first major start of what we're living in today, which is an industrialized uh, uh, consumer society. Um, what was industrialism in its beginnings? Well, it was very simply um, the acceleration of production uh, via the use of machines. In the very early days, in the 1750s in Northern England, in places like Leeds, Sheffield, uh, Manchester, Birmingham, and so on, um, there was in particular a big revolution uh, in weaving technology. Um, there was uh, the invention firstly of uh, the automated loom, uh, driven initially by horsepower, uh, but also uh, by water mills, uh, and then later by steam. And of course, eventually uh, uh, by diesel and petrol, by uh, the oil industry, and uh, more recently by all kinds of uh, electrical energy generated from various means in the UK, um, that would be mainly coal. So extremely unclean. And uh, this accelerated the production of uh, cloth, which was exported to Europe, uh, to the Americas, and all over what was uh, uh, the nascent uh, British Empire at that point in time. Now, um, uh, there was a movement uh, against uh, these early mechanized uh, production uh, techniques. Um, uh, and it was led by a man called Ned Ludd, L-U-D-D. -D. To this day, to be called a Luddite means to be somebody who is skeptical of progress, uh, particularly industrial or technological progress, somebody who is not entirely convinced by its goodness. And um, Ned Ludd uh, led uh, a Luddite protest, some of which uh, were violent and involved smashing the machines. The police were uh, caused in, this eventuated in quite a lot of oppression and the Peterloo massacre um, in, the, uh, in Northern England uh, in 1819. But prior to all of that, uh, we start to see 
uh, some opposition uh, to this. Why? Well, it's not just that people were superstitious or disliked uh, the new technologies. Um, uh, it's that people were being put out of work. People were losing jobs. It's a big issue in the world today. Uh, many of you might want to go into careers in robotics. Well, keep in mind that those careers uh, and the advancements of robotics and other technologies on planet Earth today, um, not to mention on other planets in the future, if Elon Musk has his way, um, well, those can put people out of work. Quite often I've uh, looked uh, around me here in Johannesburg and I've wondered, well, shouldn't we just have boom operators rather than machines operating the booms for us in parking lots? Um, jobs are scarce and important, uh, important uh, 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 for all of us. So uh, uh, Luddism was an early, if you like, proto-romantic movement uh, against uh, the early industrial revolution as it was happening in northwestern England in the 1750s. Romanticism has some roots in that kind of uh, oppositional, reactionary and political movement, if you like, um, but uh, uh, it is far more uh, far-reaching in, in its purview. It's not just aiming to smash the machines and put people back in jobs, it's asking questions about consciousness and progress. What is it in us that wants to believe in progress, that wants to make things better? Why are we unhappy with the status quo, if there is one, in nature? What, what, what's, why are we unhappy? You might say romanticism has that as uh, one of its core questions. Um, further, uh, romanticism, if it were just a uh, sort of early whinging, if you like, uh, if I can put it in its most negative sense, uh, about progress, well, we, we might quite easily dismiss it and just say, well, this is uh, uh, people being um, uh, conservative. This is uh, people uh, clinging on to what they know, scared of the future, apprehensive and nervous, and all of us uh, can feel that way at times. But we don't need to take that terribly seriously because um, you know, what, what, what we're trying to do is to make everything better for everyone. So there is that uh, very positive view of progress um, that, that can be advanced. And romanticism, if it were just whinging about that or apprehensive of or scared of that process, we could dismiss it probably pretty easily. However, and this is the important point for this little uh, video that I'm making. However, the crucial, crucial thing to understand is that romanticism isn't only negative carping. It's not just a, a, a fearful a paranoia about uh, possible future ramifications of our behavior today. It also posits an alternative to what it saw as the alienating effects, um, the devastating effects on people's livelihoods um, and uh, the, the, the mushrooming of uh, desire that consumer society uh, brings in. Um, romanticism has an alternative to that. And the alternative to that uh, that romanticism posits is direct personal individual experience. It doesn't sound very impressive at first, but the more you think about it, the more you realize how much of our lives and our culture is taken up with uh, what you could call mm, comparative hierarchy. I'm inventing that phrase off the cuff in this moment in time to convey to you what the Romantics were centrally concerned with. And that is that so much of our lives is lived uh, through, with, and for the sake of other people, not even people we know, but often distant people, institutions far away that we have some kind of notional uh, respect for uh, and pay obeisance to. So, um, these are all really important aspects uh, that romanticism is 
uh, keen to oppose and has an alternative to. So direct personal experience as an antidote to the inauthenticity of living your life for others, through others, and for the sake of others. This doesn't mean that romanticism is arguing for radical selfishness. I mean, it might be. If you take it far enough, you could say that this was a movement of young, brattish narcissists. And there would be some truth in that. There's no question. Um, uh, nevertheless, authentic individual experience, unfiltered by social norms, by social hierarchies, by expectations, unfiltered by concerns about what other people will think or say or do, unconcerned about um, uh, ambition, advancement, progress in the world, progress for your life, um, the accumulation of more unconcerned with all of that. It's concerned with what happens to our consciousness when we are directly experiencing something in an authentic, undiluted kind of way. Who are we then? Is the question that romanticism asks. Who are we when we're divorced from uh, social networks, uh, when we're divorced from our friends, family, colleagues, uh, uh, from our context in any given moment. Even if it's only for a few seconds or a, a few minutes, who are we then? That is the question that Romanticism asks. And in answering that question, Romanticism finds a major alternative uh, to many of the uh, social structures, norms, uh, beliefs, hierarchies, behaviors, and so on uh, that uh, accompany us uh, so regularly today. 